what's going on guys Corey Smith here core effects bringing you another weekly technical talk Forex breakdown video um, today's Friday January 25th anybody knew these videos I do them every week going over the Forex markets what's going on around the world macroeconomically what's going on on the charts um, if you're new to these videos please stay tuned check it out I can do a full breakdown of the, uh, the Forex markets everything going on what's going on last week as far as what's going on ahead the coming weeks what's on my watch list what's on my radar trades I took this past week as well as a full breakdown of all the major currencies today I'd like to introduce you guys to a new special guest here at team core FX this is our buddy Pip the newest member of the team he's our mascot here at core FX he's going to help us um, remain patient take our time move slow he is from uh, the way of the turtle that's the inspiration behind him he's a leopard tortoise he's the newest member here on team core FX stay tuned keep an eye on him he might be uh, hitting the charts with us here and sharing some of his expertise in the Forex markets. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into the video here, guys. I hope you guys enjoy these. Um, if you have any feedback for me, please throw a comment below. Let me know anything you want me to do differently or anything you like that I do. Um, and if you guys have any feedback, I would love to hear it. If you guys would smash the like button below, um, really appreciate it. And again, anything you guys want to see, let me know. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I hope you find some value in them. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. Alrighty, so starting with the relative performance on the week, we had obviously the pound New Zealand dollar top two performers uh, by pretty long shot. The pound did uh, really well all week. We're now starting to see some overbought conditions with most of the pound matchups. I'll go over that in the charts in a minute, but it looks like the pound might be ready for some correction next week. Uh, we had over 2.5% move this week, so that's a pretty strong move for Forex for weekly figures. New Zealand dollar right behind it. Euro and Aussie in here. We have the Aussie New Zealand dollar um, playing that risk on theme in the markets. U.S. equity markets pushing higher still. We had yen, Swiss franc, dollar all selling off. These are kind of the uh, safe haven currencies. Money's leaving them. Going to the riskier asset currencies like New Zealand, Aussie, and this week the pound in particular. But um, these were the overall performers of the week. I usually like to piggyback the strong pairs and the weak pairs against each other into the following week. But the pound does look like on most of its crosses, it has come up to a pretty significant resistance point. Um, and looks like we could see some correction. We could see some selling off from these resistances that price is hitting. This week's news wasn't um, too crazy, but we had Chinese GDP, which actually was worse than anticipated, starting setting the tone on Sunday. Uh, we had Theresa May speaking. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. The Brexit negotiations still. We had the pounds. Uh, unemployment job reports, average earnings beat expectations, and the unemployment rate ticked lower to 4%. 4 per, per, 4%. One of the things that got the pound going early on in the week, New Zealand dollars CPI beat expectations, got the New Zealand dollar strong. Not much going on around the Bank of Japan's uh, monetary policy statement, as usually is the case. Um, we had strong unemployment data. I mean, yeah, unemployment data out of the Australian dollar on Wednesday, another thing that catapulted that higher. CAD retail sales missed expectations on Wednesday. PMI numbers out of Europe are pretty mixed. As you can see, some missed, some beat, but overall more bearish than anything. Um, again, the euro was dragged lower this week. ECB press conference helped move the euro lower. And then today we had Trump speaking about um, reopening the U.S. government temporarily for the next 21 days, for the next three weeks, while they try to negotiate a deal for the um, border wall funding uh, at the southern border of the U.S. and Mexico. Um, so basically all the federal employees that have been uh, out of work and out of pay are now back being paid again, at least for the next 21 days till they try to uh, negotiate a deal and try to figure something out. So that should end the week with some optimism for the U.S. equity market, even though uh, I don't know how bullish the charts look. We'll check that out here in a second. Alrighty, so starting with the U.S. dollar over here on our technical charts now. As you guys can see, the U.S. dollar broke this strong uptrend. We had the 20 SMA cross below the 50, broke structure, set a new lower low, rallied back up and set what we thought was going to be a lower high. Then we got this bullish engulfing candle, right, that engulfed the prior three, four days, closed above all the highs, broke into the 50 SMA, and it looked like price was for certain going to head higher. And then what did it do? It gapped lower, opened all the way lower massive bearish engulfing candle on today friday's close looks like it's going to close a massive bearish engulfing so that shows me that this push to the downside now rally looks like it's ready to push the downside again we could throw a little fibonacci out here from this prior swing low to swing high on this move and you can see it kissed the 618 
on the 50 SMA and reversed lower. Now having a bearish engulfing candle closed, that's sending me into next week with a bearish um, sentiment on the US dollar, at least down to like this 200 day SMA. Let it catch up to that down here. That's where I'll be looking for it to head short to before I get my next general direction. Euro, as you guys can see, looked like we had a false break lower. And then that would again did the same, but inverse as the US dollar and immediately reversed back up above this strong support, above this 50 SMA, um, and really has bounced pretty strongly off of what we thought was going to be a move to the downside. So as you guys can see, this is not what we want to see as traders, especially trend traders like myself, right? This is a very sloppy market. There's no clear trend. There's no clear direction. There's not even a clear support and resistance range that price is breaking between, bouncing between, right? We're breaking below and then coming back up, breaking above, coming back down, breaking below, coming back up. So it's really, really ugly price action all around this, um, 108.50 level here. This red line going through the middle is where you can see all the traffic's happening around, right? So uh, we're getting a lot of sloppy price action. We'd like to see this pair go back into trending moves. That's where we have the more predictable, higher probability setups and the momentum of trends. So uh, right now I'm not looking. I was looking to trade this pair potentially the upside this week. Got us stopped out, but uh, right now I'm not really looking for anything on there. Japanese yen has come to what could be the end of a very strong pullback, right? Another one we can throw some Fibonacci out from the beginning of this move to the end of the move high, pull back. We're now in the 382 to 50% Fib level, very powerful for trend continuation moves. So we will be keeping an eye on price bouncing off here. looks like we're getting a little bit of a bearish engulfing candle. I would like to see it break up and engulf all this cluster of candles to the left, have a close somewhere up here, show some bulls stepping into the market. However, this is still a decent level um, as you can see, there is some structure looking left. You can draw something from the top of this prior candle over to here, and you do have some structure, nothing great, but some structure um, to the left. That Fibonacci level is more enticing to me to be looking to the upside, but just Japanese yen, I have more of a bias long for this week for sure. British pound, this is the pair that I told you guys looks a little extended, right? We're coming up to a weekly resistance up here. Price has really just for the last few weeks, all the month of January, really just ripped higher without much of a correction at all. Um, we can throw a fib on this move to see where we could potentially correct to. If we close up here, this prior support resistance level down here, 382 could be nice, or even down to the 50 or the 618 could be a decent area to look for longs. But right now, this price does look a little extended to me. We did blow through the 200-day moving average, which is typically a pretty strong resistance level. Price just blew right through it with this massive momentum bullish candle. So I wouldn't be shorting against it right now. Um, but even if you look left, this blue zone at this weekly level could be a nice area to look for shorts if you like fading oversold, I mean, overbought conditions like this and going against the trend for some quick scalps. Um, that could be a decent opportunity for it. Canadian dollar. Broke trend, broke structure, broke the 50 SMA, came up, set a new trend changing, higher high here. Range bound a little bit, corrected, hit the 50 SMA and is now bouncing. We set a higher low, price is now bouncing. We look like the CAD could be strong for the coming days and weeks. And I'll be looking for long opportunities with the CAD going into the beginning of this week. Swiss franc, as you guys can see here, broke out of this channel to the downside and has now based out around this weekly level under the 50 SMA, under the 20 SMA, under the 200 day SMA, and looks like price is stalling under here and could be ready to go lower. So Swiss franc to the downside could be a play for the coming days and weeks. Aussie, Aussie set a lower low, rallied, looked like what could have been a lower high. We are retesting this resistance, retesting this 50 SMA, pull back to what we thought could have been a push to retest the lower low and potentially set a new one. And it actually, um, set a higher low and pushed up and now is uh, right back around this resistance level, right back around the 72 psychological resistance level on the 50 SMA. I'll be looking for breakouts above this level to look for long opportunities with the Aussie or if this level holds and we get a reversal, we could potentially look for shorting the Aussie. That takes us over to New Zealand dollar. As you guys can see, pretty similar setup, right? We were moving lower, price broke higher, set this new pushed to the upside, sold off, and is now pushing back up, retesting this upside. I think we have some move up to 70 up here, up to this 70 level of looking left prior resistance. And I think bullish New Zealand dollar for the coming days and weeks is a decent setup and what I'll be going into this week looking for. 
S&P 500, this is the U.S. equity markets. We could be forming a little bit of a double top pattern here, right? On the four hour, you can see we sold off, rallied, retested broken support term resistance, broke through it, and now are basing above it. This could continue higher. This could be a reversal pattern, could roll over and move lower. Not really getting any too clear of price action right now out of this market. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on what price does with this resistance. This resistance, what I'll be watching. If it rejects it, I'll be watching for a break of this neckline for potentially short bias. And if it breaks above it, I'll be looking to the upside for a potential long bias. Um, but I think that this government reopening could help the calls of a bullish S&P 500. Um, and keep our eyes out for any further developments on the trade deal discussions with China. Gold, as you guys can see, is breaking above a strong resistance. So we've been in a bull market with the gold, setting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Form a basing pattern up here, as you can see with this consolidation. You got a flag, rectangle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we have a consolidation continuation pattern. We had a push consolidation. Looks like we might be getting ready for another push here in the gold um, uh, spider trust fund here. So this resistance up here is where we could potentially see price either head to or look for rallying, uh, correcting off of that level. As you guys can see, we are breaking out of this range. And typically with patterns like this, you take the flag of the pattern. When it breaks out, you get a one-to-one -one move of the continuation. So in the longer term, coming weeks and months, we could see gold return back up to these weekly levels up top here. However, for right now, we want to try to catch the ebb and flows of where it's heading in the short term. And right now, the first initial target is right up here around this 124 level. Gold, another interesting chart here, looking like we're getting an inverted head and shoulders. This is a reversal pattern. So gold was selling off, very strong, consolidated, broke lower, immediately reversed, and now is consolidating. Throwing the tool out here, you can see a little better what I'm talking about with this left shoulder here, head here, potential right shoulder forming here. All right, so this is a trend reversal pattern. We're now broken above the 50 SMA. We're retesting this lower high in the downtrend. If we break above this neckline, that's also gonna be breaking structure, moving into a new higher high showing us price does look like it's ready to continue to the upside. So I'll be keeping an eye on long WTI oil um, as this is very correlated to Canadian dollar specifically. I'll be watching for a break of this to the upside to show me Canadian dollar strength to the upside. All right, so now that takes us over to the euro dollar. And just like we saw with the euro index, really not good price action here, right? We are just range bound still. Um, nothing really too nice going on. We did look for a trade set up in the core effects signal room this week on the break of this counter trend line after this pullback, finding support on this 50 SMA, but price did stop us out on this daily trend line. Price broke lower, strong sell off lower, broke the 50 SMA, broke the trend line, temporarily tested this weekly level and has now bounced. Massive bullish engulfing off of it. So this is really not good price action for traders, guys. We like volatility, but we like structured moves, clean moves, trending moves. This is just sloppy all over the place price action. Price isn't following a trend, it isn't following structure, it's just breaking through levels and reversing. So I'm um, staying away from the Euro dollar until we get a little more clear direction. Pound dollar, this is where we start to see the overextended moves in the pound. We obviously blew right through this 200 day SMA with this white line, which is a very strong zone. Blew through this prior uh, supply zone here and we are now up into this strong weekly overhead resistance that we are now watching price hit. I'll be looking for price to hit this and become oversold and look for rollover opportunities there. Dollar CAD, we caught a really nice breakout trade with this today. One thing I really love seeing in Forex markets are strong sell-offs like that, right? We had a very, very strong sell-off here with this one, two, three, four, five, six day, very sharp sell-off. Broke every bit of structure, broke both through both moving averages, broke through the trend line and just had a massive sell-off we had a nice consolidation and rally afterwards found resistance right on prior structure on the 50 and 20 smas had that and then boom price sold off as you can see on the lower time frames this is where we we're watching for our entry on this trend line that broke in the opposite direction of the trend to try to catch that next push to the downside dollar yen as you guys can see, I'm watching this for a very similar setup. We had a strong sell-off. I guess I can go to the bottom of this ugly wick. And now we're range-bound, 
consolidating after a nice correction in between 618 and 50% FIB. This is a very strong reversal zone. This is an area where I will be looking for shorts on this pair. And it looks like the um, candle right now is starting to show us some rejection, right? We're starting to get what looks like could be the close of a shooting star candle. So what I'll be doing is zooming into the lower time frames, keeping an eye on these counter trend lines, keeping an eye on this price action. We got a little bit of a triple top here on the four hour. See what the hourly is showing us. Yep, a little bit of a, oh yeah, here's the triple top. Nice double top here. Now we're, we're breaking this trend line, testing the support level here. So we'll be keeping eyes on shorts for dollar yen in the coming week, as I think this could pair could move to the downside. Dollar Swiss franc. Price broke this counter trend line, broke through the 220 and 50 day moving averages, made a nice strong impulsive move higher and is now consolidating. This is another one of those setups where I like to see if this can now push to the upside and potentially catch a push higher after this strong bullish move. Stalled out a little, could try to catch another strong bullish move back up to these uh, 1.010 overhead resistance levels up here, even though we are seeing some strong bearish pressure coming to the markets. So this is why we'll have to keep an eye and see if price is able to reverse back up and above. If not, price could be selling off here, but we are hitting the 50 SMA. We are um, you know, selling off a little bit off this strong bullish move. So we'll keep an eye on this pair. Nothing to immediately jump into yet. Aussie dollar, not really very nice structure again another pair looking left to right has really not gone very far or just ugly range bound movements strong breaks coming back in strong breaks coming back in so price is just following some pretty ugly price action structure wise most recently we had a lower low pull back to what could have been a lower high has now pulled back to set a higher low bullish engulfing engulfing the prior four days and now testing this overhead trend line 50 sma we got to see where price goes from here but i'm not really looking for any setups here New Zealand dollar, US dollar, trend changing, mark structure breaking, higher high, pull back for a higher low, now retesting the higher high. Next thing we'll look for is a new higher high to be formed if price is able to break this weekly level and structure and push to the upside. But once again, another pair that doesn't have very nice structure, right? We're just chopping all around in here. So um, another one that we're keeping an eye on, but nothing too crazy. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. This one I was waiting for shorts. I was waiting for this resistance level to hold. Strong push lower, rallied, consolidated. That was a nice move that we could have found to the downside, but prices continue to push higher. We're now approaching another strong zone and it's lining up with the 200 day moving average and the 50 SMA once it catches up. So this could be a nice area for shorts. However, this has been a pretty extended pullback, so it could turn into more of a trend reversal. Euro yen was another trade we took this week. Ended up being a winner, but another similar setup. Strong push to the downside, rallied, consolidated, tried to catch the next push lower. Caught this big bearish engulfing candle, luckily there, to catch that trade to make it a winner. But then it immediately reversed, kicked the rest of our position out at break even, and went back up to now being retesting this resistance. Pound yen looks like a decent setup this week. Another one where we have this very bullish price action. Price looks like it might be getting a little exhausted. I'll look for it to potentially roll over before continuing back up to the upside. We have a trend changing new structure, right? That's a new higher high. We have price broke above the 50 and 20 day moving average. Strong bullish move. Want to look for some consolidation, some correction, and then try to catch that next push higher. Pound Aussie, very extended. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, now we wanna look for that higher low. This is a nice area of structure. We can throw our Fibonacci out here from the swing low to the swing high. And you can see it lines right up on the 50% Fib, one of the strongest levels there is. And uh, we'll be looking for potentially short opportunities and then definitely long opportunities. Pound CHF, another one approaching very strong resistance, very bullish extended moves. Look for price to correct, potentially find support around this 200 day moving average and look for that next push higher pound new zealand dollar another similar story this one's finding resistance on the 200 day sma getting a nice spinning top doji candle look for price to correct hopefully find this daily trend line on this strong support level and look for a nice long opportunity from there euro pound really extended to the downside hitting a nice strong weekly level looking left as you guys can see we have an extremely parabolic move to the downside another spinning top 
candle close indecision candle here on the support so we could look for a rally in euro pound to potentially look for um, short opportunities after the correction after the rally euro Aussie um, this was a nice setup that we missed today it was Friday we were in some other trades I did like this short though especially with the break of this counter trend line structure to the downside I do like this pair lower we'll keep an eye on it next week we had a push to the downside a rally an exhaustion Upper uh, bearish doji wicks to the upside, spinning top doji bearish engulfing. Looks like um, we're ready for another push to the downside here. Euro Swiss franc, we didn't get the breakout we were looking for at the beginning of the week here. We got some rejection candles, strong bearish engulfing, sold off, and then immediately got this massive bullish um, engulfing candle pushing back up higher. So we're back now right under this very strong resistance. We're back above the 50 and the 20 SMA, and we're above this daily trend line. Now we're looking to see again this week if price is going to be able to push through this resistance and make a push to the upside. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, this is a nice one as well. I've been keeping my eyes on to the downside. We had a strong sell-off, broke structure, new lower low, rallied, set a lower high, pushed lower this last week. We caught 90 pips off this short. This was a nice trade here at CoreFX. Came back down, found support again, double bottomed, rallied back up. We're now testing the neckline of the double bottom. One of two things can happen here. Price can respect this resistance, move back to the downside, and potentially break for a new lower low. Or price could follow this pattern, break out of this double bottom, break this neckline, and move back to the upside, breaking this daily trend line potentially too, and moving back up to around this 92 to 92.50 resistance level up here and potentially resume what was an uptrend. All right, guys, so that covers what is going on on the charts this coming week as far as news goes. We have a pretty solid week. Sunday, nothing going on, but we go right into Monday with ECB Draghi speaking, the president of the European Central Bank. Trade balance Monday night out of New Zealand could be a decent trade. Unemployment rate out of Spain for Europe. Consumer confidence out of the U.S. Tuesday. Um, basically, just a survey of the level of confidence that you know the everyday people have in the U.S. Um, and then we have CPI out of Australia, very strong inflation data. This is the consumer price index. This is inflation data from you know the consumer side of the market. Eggs. Uh, milk, gasoline, all that kinds of stuff can love, uh, uh, is to track the level of inflation in a currency. Central banks, our job is to control inflation, so you want to keep an eye on inflation levels to see what the central bank's going to do. Then we have the FOMC press conference and meeting out of the U.S. on Wednesday, first one of the year. This is going to be a big meeting. Definitely something we want to keep an eye on. Could be a strong U.S. dollar mover. GDP out of Canada, another massive mover. We also have flash GDP out of Europe. This is the first reading of GDP. Quarterly report, so it could be some uh, pretty strong movers. And then we have uh, Chinese PMI numbers. And then we have on Friday, the U.S. dollars non-farm payroll. First Friday of the month, February 1st. Strong unemployment data, very, very solid mover. So the U.S. dollar has a loaded week next week. We want to keep an eye on that, see what's going on. Be careful trading the dollar around these events, but that is going to be some strong events. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching these videos. I hope you get some uh, enjoyment out of them, find some value with them. If you guys like what you're watching, please do like below. Um, throw a comment if you want me to cover anything different that I don't cover in these videos, or if you want to just give any feedback, negative or positive, throw it in the comments below. Thank you guys. I hope everyone has a great weekend and I'll catch you all in the next video.